All right, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be a short video, kind of just a part two to the previous one where I pulled the hydraulic cylinders because I really, really wanna get the stick cylinder off. A lot of you offered good suggestions and I am gonna to try to put some cribbing underneath here and take the pressure off of the stick cylinder. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough lumber that's gonna be able to crib this high safely. So I was looking around on Craigslist for a deal or something on some cheap lumber and uh, you know, Besides my truck being dangerously overloaded, this is what I ended up with. I found a construction company that had a bunch of unused lumber they were selling. So when I got there, I was asking them, you know, do you have any scratch and dent stuff or just you can't build with it anymore? And they had a few pallets of stuff like this. So I asked them for literally like three or four boards and he said, how about the whole pallet? And uh, so I asked him how, what he wanted and he said, well, what do you want to pay? So I said 100 bucks and he countered with 20. So I think I got a pretty good deal. 35 four by sixes here. Some of them have like nails in them. I think they were used as like a temporary support structure or something. But this should, uh, this will probably be enough, I think. Oh my gosh. All right, that's actually pretty level. Yeah. I was always taught that uh, you want it to be no more than three times as high as wide, which I'm well within that. up. I'd like to not have my arm in here, you know. For some reason it makes me really nervous to have my arm here. I'm not sure why. Oh, that's just about high enough though. There we go. Out slow. Just don't like sticking my arm in here for some reason. 
Here we go. All right, it's officially on the cribbing. You can see, maybe you can see, there's like two millimeters of clean spot on that rod. Uh, so that means it's come out a little bit. I think that's all we need. It should, the pin should be loose by now. I guess we can give him a little tap real quick and see how steady is this. All right, I think that's good. Didn't hear any cracking or anything on this scribbing. Um, so that's good. And this is, um, it's hard to tell, but this is actually all gravel underneath this grass. It's just uh, three quarter minus, so it, you know, stuff grows on it, but it is gravel. So this isn't gonna sink in. Oh, popped right out. That one is also loose. All right, easier to break these free on here. This is the heaviest cylinder, by the way. I think it's about 300, 300 and some pounds. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh oh. Oh. See if this is still loose. Pipe stuck. Hope this cribbing holds up. Just so you know the plan, I'm gonna raise this side up first, just to keep the rod from sliding out like the bucket cylinder did in the previous video. So I'll get it level, then I'll secure, secure it, and then I'll pull the whole thing out. as this thing goes, right there.
Okay, this idea was heavily suggested by a lot of people in the comments. And frankly, it's a good idea, so I'm gonna steal it. Yeah, so the trick there was keeping the uh, bulldozer in gear, but that worked really well. Should have thought of that before. I don't know what I was what I was doing. How heavy is this? Ah, uh, it's. That's heavy. Oh. Didn't fold the tractor seat up. That's not gonna good. As the thumb cylinder goes I'm okay with leaving it here I think to get it off you'd have to raise the boom and stick up pretty high and I'm worried about well there's no if you remember there's no swing device in here I pulled it out and rebuilt it but I haven't put it in yet and that means there's no swing brake except for the bucket on the ground so if I were to lift up the bucket uh, and this thing's not parked flat or level it would try to rotate on me I think which would be a disaster so I'll just leave it here for now and when I fire it up, I'll ratchet strap it to the stick so it doesn't flop around and then I'll replace it at that point. I was kind of wondering what I was going to do with all this extra lumber that I got in the package deal. But uh, now that I think about it, once I get into the undercarriage, I'm going to need a lot more cribbing probably. So I'll just store this away somewhere nice and dry. Back on the bucket cylinder first. Oops. So we'll get this one off first and then we'll do the stick cylinder. Hopefully.
the next day. I was beating on this thing like crazy last night for over an hour. Uh, it takes a while for my air compressor to charge up. It can't quite keep up with this gun because it uses a lot of air. But um, I still believe this gun can do it. I think my problem is where I'm holding the rod up on the tractor. It's just jiggling around too much and bleeding off too much energy. Get nuts. Let's get nuts. in the towel. <laughs> I, uh, I'm out of ideas. I just don't have anything heavy enough to hold that end down to break this nut free. So it's going to have to go to the shop. I think uh, I'll take it there after I get the barrel rehoned because they would send it out anyways. And then I'll just have them build this cylinder. So it's, uh, it's, I, I'm out of, <laughs> I'm out of ideas. It's okay. I used a lot of viewer suggestions in this video, um, and thank you for those, by the way. I do want to quickly just go over why I didn't use some of the other suggestions. Um, they were good ones, but I, I had my reasons. One thing that quite a few people suggested was running a chain uh, or a winch from the undercarriage to the bucket and then winching it together to bring the boom up in order to get the cylinder off. And that's not actually a bad idea, but I think in my, well, at least in my opinion, this angle between the boom and the stick is way too wide. Um, I mean, any force that is going this way, it's gonna be like 5% of the overall force on the uh, come along. I probably could have worked out something with the dozer, like maybe using a snatch block and then pulling that way, but uh, then we run into the problem where there's no swing brake 
and this thing starts rotating. This cribbing actually worked really well and I got lucky on the price. So the other suggestion, and actually quite a few people suggested this, was using compressed air to separate the piston rod from the barrels. And you know, to be fair, I've actually done that quite a bit on smaller cylinders. But when you start thinking about it, I mean, these are like four inch, four and a half inch diameter cylinders. And if you calculate the surface area and you're using like 150 PSI, uh, that ends up being like 2,500 pounds over a uh, metric ton of force. That's a lot of energy. And once the rod exits the barrel, uh, you're kind of just on your own as far as what happens. This is just my opinion, but I think they're too big to do stuff like that. Using the dozer and the tractor worked really well for me. The chrome on the stick cylinder is, is like immaculate. It's perfect, you don't have to re-chrome that one. As far as the barrel though, there is, just like the other ones, there's a little bit of rust inside. I got a hold of my hydraulic shop, and basically what they do is if there's a, it's a if it's a large barrel like this, and it needs some serious re-honing like mine do, they send it out. So fortunately I found the chroming shop that's gonna re-chrome the bucket cylinder, and they also do honing, so, they have, you know, uh, it's, a, it's an actual machine shop. They're not really a hydraulic shop, but they're a machine shop and they're set up to do honing on all these kind of big cylinders. Actually, they do much, much larger cylinders too, but th these are just so big. This isn't something I would want to do with like a uh, electric drill with like a long rod on them. I think they need to be professionally done. So I'll be taking in this bucket rod and all four barrels to get cleaned up. And then all I have to do is put new seals on, and I guess I have to figure out a way to get these nuts torqued back on properly. Uh, that's a problem for future Matt, though. I'm, that's not my problem. Wasn't even planning on making this video, but you guys gave me so much good advice on removing that stick cylinder. I just had to try it. I'm really glad I did because I got it off before the winter came, saved it from any further additional rust damage. So I think the next video is gonna be back on the engine. I haven't gotten the block yet back from the machine shop, but it'll be back any day. And uh, hopefully I see you back for that one. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.